This is the Vax and Grant Sports Show presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Vax. And this is Grant. Grant, it's Wednesday and it means what? Hump day! Hump day! Woo! I don't know why I'm this excited on a Wednesday, but I am, Grant. You're here. That's all that I need. All you need is love and all you need is Grant. That's, that's all da, you need. Da, 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 da. All you need is Grant. And intern Laura, of course, as well. I missed her on Monday. I did. Every Monday, I just forget we have a show because Laura's not here, which means zero happiness, which means zero reason to do life, and I forget about my life for one day out of the week. I mean, it's not that dramatic, but it's definitely maybe that's the Maybe I'm the only one that has that internal struggle, but I that's what I go through when Laura's not here. You you go through a lot of internal struggles <laughs> really? that nobody understands. Yeah, I don't even understand most of them either. And then when I talk about them, people are like, you need help. And I'm like, that's why we don't talk about I, it. I have, a, I have a guy that you can go see. You, if know, you, you know a to. guy? <laughs> I, okay. I know a guy. I appreciate you knowing a guy. My oh. people will call your people. Thank you. Well, where can the good people of social media find us, Grant? They can find us on Facebook at the Bax and Grant Sports Show. You can follow us on Twitter at BG Sports Show. You can send us an email at... The backs are at BG Sports Show at gmail.com. There we go. There's yep. too, too it's many there things. somewhere. It's all right. And, uh, so, BG Sports Show at gmail.com. You can Instagram us by using the hashtag The Backs Grant Sports Show. And by using that, the picture will show up on Sports Radio America. Woo! You can now watch us on the cube. Uh, you can. I believe we'll be putting up. We'll, yeah, we always put up, put up a link on our Facebook page. Uh, but you can also just go to the cube and type in the Bax and Grant Sports Show number fifty-eight. We're yeah, almost to that number sixty. Wow, that's exciting! Isn't it, it is. I feel like our fiftieth show was like eons ago. I mean, it kind of uh, was. It's been like, it's been about two well, weeks. It's, yeah, it's been a couple but, weeks. But even still, like our fiftieth anniversary, and we had just uh, a huge party in the studio. Basically, it seems like it was years ago. Oh yeah, huge party. <laughs> it was. It was a great old time. But anyway, Grant, uh, yes, as Grant mentioned, you can find us on numerous platforms for social media, but you can also uh, listen to us right here on sportsradioamerica.com uh, from 12 to 3 Eastern. You can also catch us on TuneIn Radio and Live 365. You can download our podcast on iTunes. We appreciate that. Give us a little review, five-star rating if that's if you so choose. If you think we are worthy of a five-star rating, I mean, just look at us. What's not to love? I mean, you're listening to us. So you can't look at us. But either way, hypothetically... You know what I'm saying. Give us a five star rating. Anyway, <laughs> no. uh, you can also listen. To, you can also listen to us on iHeartRadio as well. Just download the app and search the Bax and Grant Sports Show. It's a cute little picture of Grant, Laura, and I. That's the best way to find us. Uh, and then obviously right here uh, live uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9 a.m. Central on Spreaker. Dot com as well. Lots of fun things to go through today, Grant. Uh, as we continue to talk about things, I will give you a hint, though, Grant, because you yell at me when I do the transition right away in the show. I wait for you to give it to me because you always say something and I pull from it and transition. So if you don't want me to continue to do these weird transitions, you basically need to stop talking. All right, I'm going to go. I okay. Just, I, <laughs> I'm just saying. See, like, it's fun doing the show, If everybody. you go back and listen to the beginning of most of the shows, I always pull something from what you say. Well, how am I, like... Just no, supposed to be completely <laughs> bland? Just say, Well, then you shouldn't look at me when I do something. You're like, why? Oh. It's like... <laughs> I, that doesn't make any sense. You're trying to blame me for the transition, so <laughs> it's something you say. I pull it from you. It's all. It comes well, what am I supposed to say? I don't know. You could just be like, and social media. Oh, uh, whatever. Instead, of, instead of it being a weird whatever. thing. No, no, it's fun. Anyway, Grant, um, when you are a sports fan, Grant, there are many things that you do. You can follow your favorite teams on on the internet. You can read about them in the newspapers, magazines, if you're that kind of guy. But so much of what people do today are on their mobile devices, whether it's their iPads, their tablets, their phones. And what we wanted to do for the first part of the show today is talk about a few apps to help make you a better sports fan. Um, as we were going through the list, and obviously you might have your own list at home as well, but we wanted to expose you to some of the newer apps out there that some of you may not have heard of. I know Grant hasn't heard of some of these, but um, it's just kind of a shameless plug for some of these apps that I either have, have worked with or work with right now. So I'll just a little you know, snippet there for you. Anyway, um, one of the apps I want to chat about, though, is called Tally, T-A-L-L-Y. And the way Tally works is it is a community where you can comment on uh, different sports stories. It's kind of like Snapchat for in that regards, where you can post a picture and you can draw on it. You can do kind of anything you want. You can post memes. Uh, you can post little short vines and everything, and everything is sorted by the sport that you want to play. So if you want, or that you want to look at. So if you want to look at what's going on in the NBA community, you click on the hashtag NBA community, and there are funny vines and videos and 
it's not supposed to be like a breaking news kind of an app, but it's something where you can engage other sports fans and have a good time and laugh and mock people as well <laughs> in a clean way, of course, without you know going over the top. But it's it's a fun app to use in that regards. Um, uh, another good one, Grant, uh, is uh, SeatGeek. For those of you that love to go to the games, I, I know I'm sure you've heard of StubHub. Uh, SeatGeek is a big app as well that you can secure tickets to go to the big games uh, when Grant books all of his tickets to go to his Cardinals games. Yeah, question, are the tickets free and through this not, app? No, no. no unfortunately, the they haven't come up with a free ticket app yet. I think that's called Stealing. I, oh, if there was a free ticket app that you're like, I just like... Uh, Front row seats, any Packer game that I want for free. Yeah, yeah. Fall I mean, free? fall free. Yeah, that would be <laughs> wonderful. Uh, now, obviously, with the um, the mul- we don't we want to cater to many. Uh, Golf shot is another good one for all of you golfers out there. Uh, Joel Wolfrath, if you're listening, uh, go download that app. Golf shot. It's a GPS so that you can download it. So while you're on the um, while you're playing on the course, uh, you can download the app and you can track your ball where it is, depending on. Where you are on the course, you can see, you know, the distance. It can rec- It's kind of like a personal caddy in your pocket. It can recommend the clubs, depending on if the course that you're playing on mm. is part of the system. Nice. Most, most, and that are. could save you a lot of money because I know some of those personal caddy things can run a little expensive. Yes. Yep. Exactly. So it's another cool way to, and you can get a bird's eye view of well. I mean, I know there's the little like you know one by one picture of the hole saying, hey, here's the hole, but you can actually, as you're going through the hole. And, of course, you can see where you are and be able to play accordingly. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's something really neat. Um, and then two other ones I want to talk about really fast. Uh, 120 Sports, uh, they are exactly what it sounds like. They put they produce videos for 120 seconds. Uh, they talk about everything and anything in the sports world, and they give you uh, all kinds of information in a very short amount of time. But it's very informative. As you know, people have very short attention sp- what? Attention span. Sorry. Just, you know, I got Welcome distracted. Welcome to the Backs of Grants I got, I got distracted. Show. Yeah, crafting show. <laughs> anyway, uh, people have very short attention spans, so 120 <laughs> seconds is usually about the time most people have for them. Check that app out. It's really cool to get your sports info on the go. If you don't have time to read the full articles, you can catch it while you're in the shower, going to the bathroom, at work, on your stuck in a stoplight, subway, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, uh, last one I want to talk about fast is called Sportscaster, but it's spelled weird. It's uh, sports and then it's C-S-T-R. And the way this app works, Grant, is that you can um, comment and vote on certain things. Uh, it's kind of like debate.com or debate.org is what it is. Um, is it's the sports-specific version of that, basically, just for you to for the, join gotcha. the comparison. And what you can do is you can ask questions on there. So the, one of the questions right now is, San Antonio at Los Angeles in a Game 5 battle, which team takes a 3-2 lead? Uh, and you can either answer Spurs or Clippers. Um, there's different sports, different communities. Uh, Floyd Mayweather says he's better than uh, Muhammad Ali. Uh, you know, he's all the money. He's a dreamer. There's numerous different ways you can interact with people, and you can post questions yourself. And for someone like us who is always looking for comments and concerns about things going on in the sports world, this is actually where I will pull certain things from the f- f- pull things for the show so that way I can see what people are talking about and you know develop right. good talking points. So those are just a few uh, of the many big apps out there. Uh, obviously the ESPNs, the NHLs, the Bleacher Reports, Fansided.com, UFC for Connor Christensen. ESPN has a pretty good app. They do. It's, it's, it's easy to use. So if you don't have it, it's really nice to get alerts and everything. It's nice and clean. It's running a lot better than it was. So yeah. They that's the one it. I use all the time. Exactly. And you and it all kind of depends on the type of sports fan that you are. Some people are like, I will only use the NFL Now app or the NFL mobile app to get all my NFL news. And some people are like, I will only use you know the Score app, which is kind of like ESPN. It's a little different, uh, same basic concept, but... Either way. And some people like Bleacher Report where you can get the scores and read the articles. And, you know, every sports fan is different. So let us know your favorite sports apps, what you think worked, and if, you know, any of them are something that you'd be interested in trying. Let us know. We're happy to happy to, to help you out and give suggestions based on what you like as a sports person. Now, Grant, you as an NHL fan, do you have the NHL app? I don't. Uh, you don't? I'm wondering. I've never tried it, so I, I didn't know if you would try it or not. I should, but I've, I've had the St. Louis Blue app. For the oh. longest time, and then it just stopped working. They probably discontinued it at like their playoff run. No, it was during the regular season. You'd oh. have to stop being rude. <laughs> I, I I should bring this up because it it was it's a good joke. It's true. It's so even funny. though it's extremely <laughs> rude, and it made me angry. Uh, Connor Christian, uh, Connor Christensen, I could say his last name. What a guy who's on the show on Mondays and Fridays when he 
decides to not skip and Ooh, shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was important. Anyway, uh, he posted a meme on my Facebook the other night, uh, and it said the joke was, "Why don't you go drinking with Blues fans or something with like Saint that?" With St. Louis Blues fans, yeah, yes. it was St. Louis Blues fans, and the guys are like, "Why?" And it's because they don't, they're done after the first round. Oh, so funny. It's sad. It's so funny. It, it was, I was like, my face got red, and I was like about <laughs> to chuck my computer across the room. It's so funny, though, in all honesty. Like, come on. Come on. I mean, it's true. That's brilliant. It's honestly true, it, and it was funny. It was funny. I'll give credit where credit's due. It's so, well done, Connor. Show. Grant is admitting that he actually, you know, semi-enjoyed that. I didn't enjoy it. I appreciate it. There's a fine line. I guess. <laughs> Fine line between tough and crazy, and you're flirting with it. Remember the Titans. Anyway, moving on. uh, (laughs) The NHL playoffs, Grant. um, Looking through, the uh, gates are pretty much all closed, except for one series has left to play uh, one more game. Game 7 tonight between the Lightning and the Red Wings. Yes. Uh, Tied at three apiece. I have the Red Wings winning this game, just because that's who I picked on my daily bracket app. Uh, What is your opinion about this game, Grant? Well, it's 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 been a really good series to watch. It's been back and forth. The Red Wings people, I feel like, weren't giving their, them a fair shake. And I feel that the Red Wings can go pretty deep if they can win this Game 7, which I think they can. I'm going to favor them winning. I want them to win. I want them to go pretty deep, even though I think the Wild are going to win the Stanley Cup. I think the Red Wings have a pretty good chance. Well, they got to beat somebody in the final. They, I mean, yeah. Then why not beat the Red Wings? All right, why not? But the Tampa Bay Lightning are an extremely good team. They've had a fantastic season. They have, they've had one of the most complete seasons they have had as a club, and it's going to be really tough to go in. They're going to be playing at Tampa Bay. Interesting fact: I was going to bring, I was trying to work it in a certain way in the show, but the Tampa Bay Lightning. To buy t- to be at the game, the playoff games, you have to be t- wearing Tampa Bay Lightning stuff or neutral, like something. You can't wear like a Red Wing jersey. Any Red Wings fans, they can't. What is that wear... illegal? They can. They they're the ones selling the tickets. They said that. And so it's at Tampa Bay, and so Tampa... if you're a Red Wings fan, you can't wear red. Yeah, and here's the thing: it, you can't get tickets if you're not a Florida resident. What kind of communist regime you are they running down there? So any Red Wings fans pretty much cannot go to the game, even <laughs> wow. though if they live... Well, I, I guess if you live in Florida... Oh, well, no, I can't. <gasps> I'm not a Florida resident anymore. Oh, no. Sorry. That's so sad. <laughs> and they Just they kidding. do have... My mom can go. Call my mom, Florida uh, Red Wing fans. She's down there. She'll get you. <laughs> She'll hook you up. She'll hook you up. <laughs> She'll hook you up, Patty style. Lives down anyway. in, Yeah, we got you. Anyway, um, <laughs> the... I need 85 tickets. What the heck? Oh, it's for friends. Okay. <laughs> for friends that live in Florida. Yeah. But for fans that live outside of Florida, the front office said that they would have they would have special exceptions. I, would hope I don't so. know. You can't I don't know just how tell they're... a fan base not to come. Yeah, but that was really interesting because I've never really heard of that. I before. haven't either. That's like Packers having a Packers Bear game and saying you can't wear anything bear related in this stadium or if you're not from Wisconsin, you can't come to the game. Like yeah, that's, that's I mean yes, I mean, nobody wants Bears fans there to right. begin with, but that's but just it, rude. It adds to the atmosphere yeah. too, and it's like if you're the Bears, it and you want to go see your team, why not? If exactly. it's probably more expensive to go see it at Lambeau Field, it is. Yeah. But if you're, drastically actually, <laughs> but if you're right in Chicago and you want to go to Green Bay, if you like going, to it's Lambeau like a three Field, hour drive. Maybe. Right. I mean, like why not? So it's like. Somebody who lives right outside of Florida and yes. wants to go see the game, and it's gonna be them. It's gonna cause them a lot of work to go and see that. It was like that is a little so ridiculous. surprising. I haven't. I wonder why the national media hasn't picked up more on this because I have heard nothing about that unless you'd have yeah, brought it to light. I, I, I just, I it. just randomly saw it on an article somewhere wow. perusing the ESPN app. I found it in the little news section. Like but yeah, that, that's. Found that really interesting. That is so surprising and shocking, in all honesty. So anyway, getting back to the original point, yes. the Red Wings are going to have a hard time playing in Tampa Bay Game 7, but I think they can do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's their 24th straight playoff appearance. They know how to handle the playoffs. Yes, they do. They've won four Stanley Cups within that 24-year span. That's and not terrible. No, not at all, considering the Blues have not won a single Stanley Cup, but we're not getting into that. Or the salt right into the wound. 
Honestly, it's just awful. It's painful. It's painful, really. It's like being this what this what it must feel to be a Bears fan or a Vikings or a Vikings fan. fan. More a so Vi- a Vikings, a Vikings fan because they've never won the Super Bowl. Yeah, <laughs> sucks, doesn't but, it? But uh, oh, looking well. looking forward into the next upcoming series that should be starting up. Well, I forget uh, the starting days, but though they start they, soon, they though, start because soon. this is the last game of the first round, right? And I'm sure they'll give them like a day or two to to breathe and travel and blah blah blah. All but, that good stuff. So I'm sure by the end of the week they'll be. I'm sure by the weekend, I'd assume. I don't know. They came out with an article, and I just didn't read it. I should ah, well. <laughs> but anyway, looking anyway. forward to um, what the second round matchups will be. Obviously, we're waiting on the Lightning Red Wings game, but the winner of that game will play the Montreal Canadiens. Um, and then on the other part of the Eastern Conference, you have the New York Rangers taking on the Washington Capitals. Almost two New York teams playing each other. Close. But the Islanders just couldn't finish out the series. Yeah, and that was really unfortunate because uh, I liked the Islanders. I you wanted did. the Islanders did, to win. Yep. It's kind of like it's kind of that underdog. We've seen the Capitals play well. We've seen them have success. We haven't, I believe, we haven't seen them win the Stanley Cup in the last couple of years. I don't years. think the Capitals have. No. No, I. I don't think they have. And the Islanders, it's been a while since they've been a decent team. They've been pretty much like the Buffalo Sa- the Buffalo Sabres of this year. I'm about to say the Buffalo Bills? Mm-mm. Yeah, the Buffalo, <laughs> they've been the Buffalo Bills. Mm-mm. <laughs> Maybe but the new Bills, I don't know. I wanted the New York Islanders to win Game 7. It was kind of unfortunate, but the Capitals, they're a tough team. And they took them to Game 7 after not having a fantastic end of the yeah, season. Yeah, that's a good thing for them. I mean, if you can take a team to seven games, regardless of how the series went, if they were not up 3-0 and then went to seven games, okay, then that would be a little worrisome. But the fact that right. they were able to battle with a hard team like the Capitals till seven games, that's commendable for the Islanders. It's very good. So looking into the series now, Capitals taking on the New York Rangers. I'm favoring the Rangers in this one. The Rangers won the President's Trophy. I believe that they're a better team than the Capitals, but definitely you can't ca- count the Capitals out. And this is hockey. We've talked about it before that really any team can win depending on the night because it's just a really competitive sport, mm-hmm. and there's just a lot of factors that come into it. The and it's it's going to be it's going to be a really good series. I'm excited for it, but I, yeah. I the New York series would have been great. That would, would have been have. great to watch. Crosstown rivalry, that Subway have, series like the Yankees and the Mets. That would have been great. It would have. And then looking, I just want to talk about a little bit about the Montreal Canadiens. Sure. Even though they don't know their opponent, I think either the Lightning or Detroit can beat them. I would agree. I am not giving I'm not seeing the Canadiens getting out of this series. Because definitely after a Game 7 series, they're both going to be raring out of the gates, ready to go. Rightfully so, so, yeah. And they're both fantastic teams. But although the Canadiens are also a really good team, so it's going to be a really interesting matchup. Heading over to the Western Conference, the Minnesota Wild are taking on the Chicago Blackhawks. And I I said it uh, five minutes ago, I think the Wild are going to win the Stanley Cup. Yes, you heard it here first. I, I doubt if they've heard it here first. Probably They're, not. You've heard it been... here 37th. <laughs> I don't know. Well, since mid-January, the Minnesota Wild have been on fire, to say the least. It's It's been a wild ride, one might say, for the Minnesota Wild. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> nobody's out. heard that Get joke out. before. Get out. But then again, you got to look at the Blackhawks. They've had a fantastic end of their season. Um and they're always a, they're always a lethal team in the playoffs. They're a really tough team to play. The Blues found out that the hard they way really last did. year. Yep. They last year they were only taken out by the Stanley Cup winners. winners as in the LA Kings. So the Blackhawks, they're a tough team. So that's going to be another tough series. It's tough for these NA, NL Central teams because they're just the it's it's all good. They're all good teams. They're the, it's it was the best division in my opinion, and and all of hockey. And the Western Conference statistically had better records. I don't think anybody would have been able to argue against that, honestly. Right. And then looking over quick, the Anaheim Ducks take on the Calgary Flames. I honestly want to say the Ducks because they've had a couple games rest. Calgary and Vancouver played a played a heavy hitting series and so they're going to be a little tired but then you could also argue that Calgary is just going to be ready to destroy the Anaheim Ducks because I think they're a tougher they're gonna, team yeah. so it's going to they're all interesting they're all really good series I'm really excited playoff hockey is the best Woo! kind of hockey it's in my aside opinion aside from Olympic hockey 
The Olympics? Yeah, Olympics, it's great. Yeah. But regular, regular uh, playoffs in general, hockey is the best for the playoffs. Yes. I love it. I agree. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. Hopefully the Calgary Flames don't make a duck a la mode, but you never know with the flame. Oh, my yeah. word. Yeah, had to work it in. Anyway, I'll we're going to go to a quick break. you thinking about, about that one? About a minute and a half. Anyway, gosh, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, the NFL draft is starting tomorrow. Uh, but what if the all-time draft was viewed in a little bit of a different way? We'll talk about that and so much more when we come back. This is the Baxter Grand Sports Show presented by Sports Radio America. Welcome back to the Bax and Grant Sports Show, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm Bax. And this is Grant. All right, Grant, in the first segment, we chatted about some of the apps to make you a better sports fan. We chatted, chatted also a little bit about the NHL playoffs and what's to come in the second round. A lot of exciting action as uh, fans continue to look forward to that. Uh, and Grant, you even said that the Minnesota Wild, you believe, will be the Stanley Cup winners this year. I do believe Which is, that. There's nothing wrong with that. I think Minnesota is a fantastic team. And, uh, yeah, it's, they definitely have a good shot to do that. But it's the NHL playoffs. Anything can happen. Anything is possible. I love it. Anything is awesome. Everything is awesome when you're part of a team like the Minnesota Wild. Anyway, Grant, <laughs> uh, when it comes to the NFL draft, I was reaching hard on that one. Anyway, yeah, uh, I, love it, love I it. don't even know. Half, like I said, half the time, this is what happens when I tell people about my, my, my mental status. People freak out. I, I'm not me- I'm fine. I'm Remember, fine. I have the guy. I have the you guy got there. a guy. Is it Connor? Not Connor? No. Oh, you know a better guy than Connor? Oh, all right, well, we'll figure it well, out. Well, my wife is a psych major. I mean, That's true. She I'll can, just have she to, can talk to you I'll about have to your lay problems. on your. You're going to walk home, and I'll be laying on your couch, and she'll have a notepad, <laughs> and be like, and how does that make you feel? Be like, well, working with Grant is just so, I just, I can't. I can't do it. No, I wouldn't. And I wouldn't. she's like, I'm married to him. How do you think I feel? <laughs> probably turn into a counseling session for her, and be like, I'm so sorry, Keila. How can I help you? How can I help you? Anyway, Grant. Uh, an NFL article uh, from NFL.com coming out uh, on the right before the NFL draft, which starts tomorrow in Chicago. 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 Anyway, um, the article is titled, uh, if my computer wants to stop freezing, uh, the All-Time 2015 Draft. Uh, and the way that this article works, Grant, is that they, um, the NFL or the draft needs for this year's 2015 draft were addressed with all-time players. And there are three rules for this um, for this draft, this hypothetical draft, is that uh, the first one is the real Brady rule, which means no current NFL players can be taken. Uh, the no ordinary Joe Montana rule, which means players are evaluated on their college deeds only. So just be, some people like Tom Brady, who have had an illustrious professional career, but their college career was, eh, you know, doesn't count. You can't draft Tom Brady. And then the Jim Brown is better than your running back rule. And the goal is to fill the 2015 needs, uh, not to name all-time greats who are great. So, scooting through this uh, on a quick pace, 
Uh, with the first pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Steve Young out of BYU. Uh, very good pick, solid pick, no off-field issues, uh, and hopefully he won't uh, shout obscenities in the school cafeteria either. Um, an interesting pick. I think it's a good idea, in all honesty. Tampa Bay needs a quarterback. One of the best quarterbacks to ever come out of the college game, Steve Young. Not a bad pick at all, honestly. Yeah, and then if we're going to be that kind of guy looking at his <laughs> NFL NFL career, I would have been, that's something the Buccaneers could have definitely used. If the Buccaneers had the Steve Young, had Steve Young, it, yeah. Well, you can also make the argument, would they be as good, though? Because you need a team, <coughs> not just a quarterback. So even though you would have a great quarterback like Steve Young, are you necessarily going to be... Would his career be that successful if he was with somebody like the true. Buccaneers? That's because very true. Because you need a line, you need receivers, and then you need and then defense. You know, everybody says defense wins championships. You need defense. You need the whole team. So, yeah, yeah. no, I completely agree. Uh, looking through the remainder of the top six picks, uh, the Tennessee Titans at number two. They have defensive line issues. They address that uh, by drafting Mr. Reggie White. Uh, for those of you that are Packer fans, you're well aware that he spent time with the Philadelphia Eagles and the Green Bay Packers before retiring, won a Super Bowl with the Packers. Uh, yeah, he ten, was, he, Reggie White, he he was the one that started the Lambeau Leap, am I Now it's Leroy Butler. Leroy Butler, yes. Yeah. You were well, so close. A big guy. You're not That's a real Packer the, fan. I guess not. not. I guess I'm no. not. Leroy. Leroy Butler. Leroy? I don't know. I, but I'm Mr. Butler. Sure, but I'm pretty sure they were playing at this. He was playing... When it was yeah played. well yeah they were all on the same team obviously at that and time. they were they were on the same line so because he was a deep because it yeah, was yeah Leroy a was a safety Leroy was no Leroy Butler was, was a safety promise I'm pretty sure it was a big guy it was a big guy that did it no Leroy all Butler right, okay. picked off an picked off a touch uh, an interception and then that I think was off of a fumble recovery maybe I don't we'll know. check the film we'll Whatever. check the film. to the film room anyway rounding up some of the top picks Jim Brown goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars now that Maurice Jones Drew is uh, retired. Uh, the backfield in Jacksonville is gaping wide open, rightfully so. Fill it with one of the best with running backs. With arms wide open. Yes, it really <laughs> is wide open. There you go. A Creed <laughs> reference today. We need to work in a Chicago reference. Uh, the Oakland Raiders, um, now that they have Derek Carr, they believe in him. They think he's their quarterback of the future. You need to be able to throw to somebody, Grant, so why not draft Jerry Rice? I mean, why not? Yeah, Mississippi Valley State, a solid pick Fantastic for them. Fantastic receiver. He is. Great college uh, career, great 40 time. Uh, he was a little slow on his 40 time, but people didn't really care about that because he has great hands no matter what. Uh, Washington Redskins, they need help on defense, so they go out and draft Lawrence Taylor, the Lawrence linebacker. Lawrence Taylor. Right there. Lawrence, LT, the original LT. And then the Jets, because nobody wants to play for them, they decide to go and ruin John Elway's career. <laughs> and they draft John Elway with the sixth pick out of Stanford. Uh, some of the other notable picks, uh, you've got the Chicago Bears drafting Deion Sanders out of Florida State. That defense needs to be fierce once again since Brian Urlacher left and all the other things going on with that team. That just team has lost their luster on defense. No one's scared to play the Bears defense anymore. And Deion Sanders being added to that would rightfully help them. Definitely. Um, let's see, going through some of the other ones. Uh, Barry Sanders going to the Minnesota Vikings because... Um. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, Adrian Peterson's not going anywhere though, so I'm not. I'm a little surprised. But whatever. Well, because there's a lot of talks of him going to the Cowboys, there is, and he but... has come out and said that he wouldn't mind playing for the Cowboys. He did. Yes, he has come out and said that. But I think as of yesterday or the day before, Minnesota came out and put the hammer down again. Was like nothing's going to happen. Really? I'm almost really? positive. I could have been interesting, dreaming, but I'm almost positive that they came out and said that. Um, the Cleveland Browns doing a very Cleveland Brown thing and drafting Ryan Leaf. Um, so good luck with that one. I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> Here, you know why that's a bad move. Uh, the New Orleans Saints drafting Tony Gonzalez because why lose Jimmy Graham and then draft the best tight end to pretty much ever play the game right after? That seems like a pretty fair thing to do. Yeah. Um, Ed Reed staying in Miami uh, after going to the U, Miami University. He will be drafted by the Miami Dolphins, so good for them. Uh, Ray Lewis going to the 49ers. Now, that would have been interesting to see that happen. Uh, they need some help. Chris Borland's retiring. Patrick Willis retired. You need a linebacker. Ray Lewis will fill that gap. Ray Definitely. Lewis is like five linebackers. <laughs> He'll get stuff <laughs> he done. Is. He He'll is. get he's it a, done. He's a big boy. He is. He really is. The Houston Texans need wide receivers, so who better than to fill that than Michael Irving? That'd be great. That'd be a great move for them. Uh, San Diego Chargers draft Marshall Falk. 
A uh, very good move for them. The Kansas City Chiefs draft Randy Moss out of oh, Marshall. what a guy. Very, very good guy. The Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles grant at the 20th pick, Roger Staubach. From Navy. Woo! Never heard of him. <laughs> Honestly, never heard of never him. Never heard of Roger Starbuck. Nope. <laughs> Am I a bad person for saying that? <laughs> Do you know who the Dallas Cowboys are, Grant? I know who the Dallas Cowboys are. That's the reason you know who the Dallas Cowboys are. All right, it's because good. of Roger Starbuck. If we're if we're going okay, the picture in my defense, it's an old picture. It's yes. in black and white. And if you <laughs> want any football history going back that far, he's not that old. I know Packers. That's about it. When you're getting pictures that are black and white, do you know white, who Bart like... Starr is? Do you know who Don Mikowski is? Yes. Do you know who Brian Brom is? Brian Brom. Remember Brian Brom? You remember Craig Nall? Aaron Brooks. I know Aaron Brooks. You remember Mark Brunel? No, don't know that one. Wow. You should really do your your history on backup quarterbacks. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> those are, oh, those are all geez. former backup quarterbacks for the Packers. Oh my gosh, you're disgusting, man! I was it's not my fault that I, I was didn't lock as a my. Child. I was not, I was just about to say it's not my fault. I did, I did not that lock myself lock in my myself room. Into, into a room I was with the out Packers in the yard. Bible. <laughs> I was out in the yard playing football. All right. Memorizing people's names, yeah. And just like I, okay, with by a candle light, a, br- <laughs> a brief, a brief glimpse what, into my mind. Who's the Packers fourth string quarterback? I will give you a brief glimpse in my mind. When I used to go, because I was homeschooled. Yeah, haha, <laughs> homeschooled. I have no social skills. Get over it. Anyway, when I was homeschooled, as a ch- <laughs> there you go. You just got that joke. When I was no, homeschooled yeah. as a child. I would go on walks for gym class in the morning. That was our gym class. My mom thought it was a good idea. We'd go on family walks in the morning. Whatever. It was freezing in the middle of December. Anyway, so to keep warm. How warm? How? What was the temperature? In December? What was the temperature? Negative in something. No, yeah. in Wisconsin. Oh, I thought you were I like lived in... in Green Bay until I was 13, Grant. Okay, okay. okay anyway, okay, yeah. Okay. No, not in Florida, please. please. I was, was going to be it like, It was 60 stop. degrees, Grant. It was so cold. No. So as we're walking, I would ask my mom, hey, can you name off NFL teams and I will tell you the starting quarterback for every NFL team and I could that's really and then if I got really, really cocky good. I would start naming running backs and wide receivers and even the kickers because I had a soft spot for kickers but I, I would I, at one point in time I could name the starting quarterback for every single NFL team I don't know that's if I, I probably could do that now go no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that at another time anyway we got horribly off track uh, the Arizona Cardinals though Grant at number 24 drafting Walter Payton addressing that definite need um, especially if they don't end up getting Adrian Peterson. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys drafting Earl Campbell out of Texas. Big, huge help to fill that gap. The Denver Broncos grant Don Hudson. They draft Don Hudson out of the University of Alabama. And then as soon as he has retired, the man is already back in the league. The Indianapolis Colts <laughs> drafting Troy Palomalo. It's legal. He's He's retired. Bring it's him back. Legal. It's legal. Bring him back. Um, and then Dan it's legal. Marino. It's legal. It is. Why do you use the term because legal? He, because he just retired, and some people be like, he's not eligible. But no, he's retired. The papers have been filed. The press conference has been held. Babies have been kissed. Hands have been shaken. Okay. I, I, that's, that's not, that's, yeah. Party favors have been sent. I don't know. Anyway. Troy Palomalo going to the Colts, that would be very, very helpful for their defense, especially after having issues with getting past Tom Brady and Peyton Manning in the playoffs. You need to be able to have players that can shut him down. Troy Palomalo, one of the best at doing such. Uh, Green Bay Packers. With his hair. Yes, with his hair. All with his hair. With his just for men. No, not just for men. Um, um, head and shoulders. Yeah, head, head and, shoulders. and shoulders. I don't know. Something. My favorite commercial of all time is where his, he- his hair is like yeah. 10 times they the like size of his head. They teased it within like a mile of it. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, and then two of the other notable ones, Grant, the New Orleans Saints uh, will draft Dan Marino, quarterback out of Pittsburgh, a young prospect. We'll see if he amounts to anything. I don't think he'll ever win a Super Bowl, though, but he's a good quarterback. And, uh, <laughs> and just to make that clear, the Seattle Seahawks do not have a first-round pick, but it just went to, I believe they have a second-round pick, or whatever their first pick is. Yes, the Seahawks and the Saints, uh, with that deal for Jimmy Graham, flip-flopped a bunch of things, one being their first-round pick. And then the New England Patriots close out the first round by drafting Bo Jackson out of Auburn. And then also the uh, Bills are in there because they don't have a first-round pick. Yes, the Buffalo Bills do not get a first-round pick. Yeah, so they had them picking up Randall Cunningham 
and it says Seattle would pick up uh, Max Unger from Wisconsin. Oh, sure, yep. And I forgot to mention this, too. At 23, the Detroit Lions drafted Mean Joe Green out oh, of nice. North Texas State. So I forgot to – I mean, this this whole list as a whole, you've got Broadway Joe Namath going to the Bengals at 21. You've got Rod Woodson, Charles' older brother, going to the Steelers. Like, and, it, and, and it's actually just interesting to think of all of these players – like if this was just, one draft class, people oh, would know what to do. Grant, they they'd break themselves. I, but <laughs> I just, would like, draft, you know, people for not even needing them, but just to have them. Be like, ah, perfect, get them, get them, <laughs> get come. Barry with Sanders, us, come Bo with Jackson, us. Randy Moss, Joe Name, with everybody, come to Green Bay. Please. Why not, <laughs> Lawrence Taylor? But it would be interesting to just. Like just look at like this is really cool. Whoever put this together, like yeah, well done. Was, I applaud it. It, it was the type really of article great. I wish I could write, but I never feel like I have time to do it. <laughs> but it was a great article. But just thinking about like players and where they get drafted and who they get drafted with, it really can affect their career. Yes. So just thinking of if somebody like who is drafted up or. Like Jeffrey. Steve Young, especially. I mean, thinking about right. Steve Young, thinking about Randy Ma- or Jerry Rice going to the Raiders. I mean, Jerry Rice spent his career at the 49ers. Yes, he did go play other places at the end, but Jerry Rice is a 49er. You think of Jerry Rice, you think of the San Francisco 49ers. Right. Like, he helped build that franchise. Same with Steve Young. Like, imagine if Steve Young and Jerry Rice never go to San Francisco. Do they win all the Super Bowls? Probably not. Probably Are not. they a... Pat, America's one of the America's top five all great you know NFL teams probably not right and another question I actually just thought of kind of going away from that kind of looking and thinking of like yeah they might go with a bad team but they still might able to be successful kind of because I was thinking uh, the second pick would be Reggie White yeah. going to Tennessee and I was like would he do well and I was thinking I think he'd actually do pretty well and my question is, in the draft, do is it easier for defenders who get put with maybe not so great of a team to make a name for themselves more than players who play offense? Well, I think yes and no. If you're a defender, I think you obviously you have one job, tackle people. It's relatively straightforward because a lot of that does depend on you as a person. Yes, you work as a unit to tackle somebody or make a defensive stop, but so much of what you do on defense is you single-handedly tackling somebody. On offense, you need everything to go right, especially if you're a quarterback or running back. You need your receiver to get open. You need your offensive line to block. You need to be able to you know, complete the pass. Defensively, I think it's a lot easier to play for a bad team and make a name for yourself because we've seen players do that in the past where they have played for not very good teams and still had good careers because they've been... Oh, J.J. Watt's a good I example I was going to say, are you, you could use J.J. Watt because... Houston's Texans not are, a great team. They're not a great team. They're okay. They're middle of the road to the They need bad, a new quarterback, yeah. honestly. Well, that's topic for a different yeah. time. And there's Texans. even rumors of them trading DeAndre Hopkins as well, one of their big wide receivers they drafted right. just two years ago. So we'll see what happens with that. But this article as a whole, a very good one. Uh, the NFL draft kicking off... Uh, tomorrow night in Chicago, so stay tuned for that. Uh, a lot of people are excited for that. Um, Grant, before we get to your rant, I I, I just want to say like I, I'm really excited for the draft because I keep on getting notifications to my phone saying that Packers select with a 30th pick so and so in the mock draft, and I'm like the yeah. draft was today when I'm first reading it, and so I'm excited for it to actually be real. <laughs> yeah, and I mean real in all honesty, I mean like whoever the Packers take, I usually don't. It's going to be a defensive guy in the first round. And I'm right. not a defensive guy. I'm an offensive guy. I love quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. Kickers. So, kickers for days. <laughs> hey, man, you hate them until you need them, and then you love them. But if they miss, then you hate them. But anyway, it's a dying art. Um, we'll see what the Packers do. More than likely, they're going to take, I believe it's a corner or an inside linebacker, depending on who's yeah, available. Yeah, that's what everybody's been saying they're going to play. Yeah, so more than likely, that's what the Green Bay Packers are going to take, which will be needed. They need to address those issues on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I will ask you this, Grant. Do you think, without a shadow of a doubt, the Buccaneers will draft Jameis Winston with the first overall pick? I mean, a lot of people say that they ah, are. The heck but with the other people. I, what are you, Grant Coppersmith, in the flesh? What I, do you think? I think they're going to. I don't. Th- I think they shouldn't, though. Yes, they I'm, should I'm not. right there with you. But as a kind of crappy organization, they're <laughs> probably going to. But I'm saying, if anybody from the front office of the Buccaneers are listening. Please, don't for the sake of your organization, it. don't do it. Don't do it. You have one job. 
Don't do it. He's going to be a huge flop. I don't care what he can do on the field. And even then, how do you know he's not going to be... Look a- at everything he's been able to do so far without money. You're going to hand this guy 10 to $20 million and then imagine what he's going to do. Exactly. He's been able to get into all this legal trouble without you know any money involved, really. With Beak and in college yeah. and playing a sport. And- exactly. And college athletes are supposed to have zero free time, and yet he's still managed to get himself into lots of issues. But it's yep. been with you know yelling obscenities in the cafeteria, supposedly being given crab legs from a Publix employee. Not saying he stole them; he said they were a gift from one of the employees. Mm-hmm. And right. all of the rape charges that have come out as well. Right. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care how bad you need a quarterback. Dear God, there are other don't quarterbacks. Do there are other quarterbacks. If you don't like Marcus Mariota, then just address a different part on your team, and then just draft another young guy. Maybe in a, f- a few rounds later, there's a few good quarterbacks that are not being talked about that you could usually you could potentially build a team around. Definitely. Look at Tom Brady, sixth round guy. Nobody expected him to do what he's doing. It's possible, Tampa Bay. Believe in yourself. You can do it. Or. Like that article we saw the other day about the master trade with the Chicago Bears, like a, a oh, hypothetical. right. There was an article that NFL.com came up with, and it was said, six trades we'd love to see on NFL Draft Day, which would be awesome if they all happened. But the big one that we were talking about is that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Chicago Bears execute a huge trade, which would, the Bears would send uh, Jay Cutler, Matt Forte, and like one or two other picks, I think, to the Buccaneers for their first-round pick, and then the Bears would in turn get the first round pick and then probably draft Mariota or Winston or whoever. But Lovey Smith, he had he coached Jay Cutler and Matt Forte for many a season. Why not do it? Right? Why not? It'd be it would be really interesting. Packer fans would be beside themselves if Jay Cutler was just suddenly gone. We'd I, I think we'd hold celebrations in the street or mourn. I'd probably mourn. Yeah, because, because then, then the defense would be like, well, what are we, what? Now what? Now that we don't have anybody throwing us the ball anymore. Exactly. Exactly. All right, Grant. Well, it is time for your answer. <laughs> and, yeah, no, I mean, we've got video now so people can see that you usually like to dance before your answer. So I nothing... always dance, man. What are yeah. you talking about? I always dance. Dance every day. Woo! Dance! <laughs> All right, Grant. Enough of you. A minute on the clock, sir. Are you ready? I'm ready. On your mark, get set, go. This past week, the St. Louis Cardinals played the Milwaukee Brewers, and in the fifth inning at an at-bat, Adam Wainwright uh, popped a pop-up into foul territory, and as he started running towards the first base, he (coughs) popped his Achilles. And done for the season, Cardinals ace, gone. My big complaint about it is with... The AL and the NL and the differences with pitchers and if they bat or not. AL, they have designated hitters. Pitchers don't hit. And pitchers in the NL hit, but you could barely even call it that. They barely make contact. They don't do anything. It's basically a waste of an at-bat. It's a bunt, basically. And 90% of the time, it's a bunt. And you risk injury. Now, if he wasn't batting, the Cardinals season now is completely different. So it needs to be changed to designated hitter. At least, if you don't want to do that, make them the same. Time's up. I don't like pitchers batting. I don't. It's I don't either. Because they don't have batting practice. They're not. Most of them, like the grand majority, you maybe see one or two pitchers in the whole league that are good, but the vast majority of them aren't good. No, nope, not at it, all. It risks injury because Shut him down. I was actually talking to Connor Christensen about it, and he was like, yeah, he probably didn't stretch well enough. Yeah. And it's like... I mean, he doesn't. He doesn't hit. No, he doesn't do that. He's not. He's probably like all tensed up, trying to do well, and he, yeah, yeah, pops his Achilles right out. So, uh, Adam Wainwright done for the season. It sound like it popped out of his leg, just like just hanging right out on the ground. Yeah, but he's uh, done for the season. He's reconstructing surgery, and um, he's done. I think the Cardinals are still going to do well. They yeah. have enough depth in pitching, but it's definitely not going to be the same without Wainwright. There. Yes, absolutely correct. Well, it's not the same without Intern Laura either, who we will get to next in our next segment. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will talk about Intern Laura. Uh, but also, Grant, should the NFL get rid of touchdown celebrations? <gasps> we'll talk about that and so much more when we come back. This is the Bax and Grant Sports Show, presented by Sports Radio America.
Welcome back to the Max and Grant Sports Show, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm back. And this is Grant. All right, Grant, you know what? If there's one thing people love in the sports world, it's a great celebration after a goal, after a home run, after a touchdown. But Grant, what if, this is not my what if segment, what if the NFL got rid of touchdown celebrations? How would you feel? Well, they kind of already have, like, stunted them a lot. They have. They've stunted the growth of touchdown celebrations. Oh, where you can't use, like, I forget, I don't know the exact rules, but I'm... You can't use, like, props anymore. You can't uh, involve, I think, more than one other <laughs> teammate. My my favorite celebration, I remember, I don't know who started it, but I remember when I was young because we always watched the Rams games because that's what was on locally, and I always remember when they score touch. They won the Super Bowl when I was living in I St. Know, Louis. I know. So it was, they were a big deal you back then. You beat the Packers on my birthday. Thank you. That one year you blew it. Oh, no, you lost. That was the year you lost. I was never a St. Louis fan, so you can't, like, you can't put me with that. I'm fine. It's fine. <laughs> but anyway. one of my favorite ones is that one of the guys scored a touchdown, and then they would spin the ball mm-hmm. on the turf, and then they all like the teammates would like huddle around it and like put their hands like they were warming out of the campfire. Yeah. And that was great. And there's been just countless ones with uh, <laughs> cell phones being hit under yeah. the protector on the uh, goal post. Uh, we were t- you said the pylon one, but yeah. using it to golf. Chad Johnson with his, or Chad Ochocinco, he would yeah. putt the football. I mean, Chad Johnson, Terrell Owens, Randy Moss. Dancing those on were the, the star. Dancing on the there, star. There, there's a bunch of famous ones, yeah. and like people remember them to this day, and there's sometimes iconic statues of, uh, even in baseball, uh, I forget his name, but he uh, hit a home run in the World Series. I'm forgetting now. I think it was game six, and he, and he hit a home run, and he was like, cheering going around the bases and it's one of the most iconic pieces in baseball there was also um in hockey there was i don't really know if he, oh, I, he I scored the, the goal he was like in mid-air and he was like celebrating yeah, mid-air he's like yeah, yeah I, it, don't, I know who you're talking i don't know yeah, the name, but it, it's and the celebrations are just a great it part is. of hockey. Think of soccer, or not especially hockey sports. Too. like i think soccer yeah. especially like <laughs> they have awesome when you score a goal like because it's a big deal. It is. It's hard to score. It is. It really is. And I mean, I think I don't know the exact name of the team, but there's a team I think in Iceland that they do team celebrations, and they're some of the best ones they've done is they've created like um, like a human bicycle, and they've like had players oh, like, like rolling. They've done the fishing where you know you've got a guy where you like pull them in and they all like get together and like hold up <laughs> one of the players. I think they one of them delivered a, like a, a fake baby at one time. Like, oh, geez. they go way over the top with it, but it's I, I so s- funny to watch them. I saw one really weird uh, soccer celebration where they scored and they were like patting him on the back, and then one of the uh, his players' uh, teammates bites him in an interesting area. I'm not going to say which, but it was it was weird. He <laughs> bit him? Yeah, he bit him. Like, saying, good job, man. Nom nom. A Luis Suarez, you. Wow. And there you go. Soccer reference. I know soccer. Oh, don't worry. So look proud. Me, look at me. I'm, I'm talking soccer. I know. So proud. But anyway, <laughs> no, um, I don't believe the NFL will ever fully get rid of touchdowns because I think... Touchdowns? I hope yes, they should touchdowns. fully get yes, rid of touchdown touchdowns. Yes, touchdown dances. Touchdowns. Uh, NFL. New, Just new kickers. Came out. Just kickers. <laughs> oh, gosh. Woo! Actually going to be football for a reason. Yeah, football with a U instead of an O. <laughs> Football, no, yeah, I no touchdown, touchdown celebrations as you were, Grant. But anyway, they need to they need to get rid of some of the rules. I miss the good ones. I do because all you can really do is I like think of put your arms up and then maybe dance. A yeah, little bit. I think of one of the iconic ones, especially for Packer fans, is the fake mooning by Randy Moss. Oh jeez! When he caught the touchdown against Green Bay in Lambeau Field, he turned around. He didn't actually moon them, but he like fake mooned them, and everyone was like, "Ah!" Oh. It was. It yeah, he got in trouble for that. He did one, get though. in trouble for that, but it was still like, well, and I was a little like shocked by that. And I mean, stuff like that's a little inappropriate because yes. you have a lot of young kids watching that. Because when I was watching that game, I was, I was younger. Was yeah, like, we were both young, doing? and my parents were like really mad when he did that. I remember my dad like screaming and said he was gonna start calling up the commissioner. I don't know if it was good. It was, and it was. I think was it was it Tregl- Tegliabu? Paul I, I, I think was that the last commissioner? I, I don't remember. We've pretty much we've been in the Goodell era for so long. But anyway, Grant, hopefully they will not get rid of 
celebrations as a whole. But we do need to have a reason to celebrate now, Grant, because intern Laura is here. Uh, as it is on Wednesday, so we want to have intern Laura bring herself into the studio. Because we, we miss her when she's not here. So, hi, Laura. Hi. How are you? Good. Grant, can you scoot over, please? No, yeah, stop, I'm good right here. Stop being rude, Grant. This is my segment. Move over. <laughs> you get 50 other minutes of the show to talk, Grant. Laura gets like four because you talk so darn long. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She's not kidding. I am. She's if not anybody kidding. was keeping track, I walked out. Yeah, you did. <laughs> anyway, all right, Laura, welcome. Uh, it's Wednesday, which means it's time for your thingamabopper. Mm-hmm. Are we, do I need to pack a backpack for your segment like I did for the four, ra- four desert race I did on Friday? No, you don't. But I was actually explaining that to someone yesterday, and they were like, how do you know this? This is completely random. I explained it to my fiance, too, and she was like, that sounds that awesome. Crazy? I'm like, we're not doing that for the honeymoon. It's crazy. <laughs> it's not happening. Hey, consider it. <laughs> nope. Consider it. Not consider if she it. likes it, a maybe if she's gonna pay the thirty-seven hundred dollars yeah. a person. Okay, okay I sure. Mean, I guess that's fair. <laughs> sure, then I will gladly go. <laughs> okay, well today I have something for you that really shattered my faith in humanity. So if you don't want your faith in humanity to be shattered, mm. um, don't listen. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wow. Okay. This seems it's really bad. fun and it's exciting. <laughs> no, I'm it's really not. happy to hear Never this a dull story. moment. It's just Laura. something that I saw and I was like, oh, I need to share this with someone. It's eating me up inside. Here, let me depress somebody else. <laughs> Misery loves company, Grant. Okay, it's called shock fighting. Shock fighting. Shock fighting. And it's actually banned in the United States in all 50 states. Um, but it's, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, basically what it is, it's fighting boxing, but you have tasers, shockers um, at the end of, at the what? end of your gloves. What? Three million volts, my friend. <laughs> How many? Three million. That's awful. It's not don't a you, typo. I looked it up. Die? Looked it up. Looked it up. Floyd Mayweather, no, you Manny die. Pacquiao fight. Go. <laughs> 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 I was like genuinely concerned. I was like, three million volts. That's a lot. That's so I looked lot. up like all this electricity stuff, trying to figure out how is this not killing people. And apparently, that's because the volts don't matter, but like the currency in which it travels. So it's apparently it doesn't kill you. I'm sure it could. That's... It said if you were on drugs, it could probably kill you. Because well, I mean, drugs kill. In, yeah. In just don't in do drugs, kids. Stay in school. <laughs> This I mean, public service announcement brought to you by Grant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but no, a shock fighting. And it's so, so, so difficult to find information on this in the United States because it is illegal and because every website that I went on to was in a different language and it was so difficult and it's just really difficult to find information on it. Sorry. How dare rant. you not bilingual? You said in your application it's, you were. I am <laughs> <laughs> Spanish. Pig it's Latin Spanish. Pig Latin doesn't count, Grant. <laughs> I knew like some of the words. It was like. Portuguese because it was from Brazil El and I was Chaco. like <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's not> <laughs> and the only page it would translate was the main page and it was like five words I was like this is not helping me <laughs> just throw it all into Google Translate and call it a day <laughs> oh <laughs> I guess I could have done that technology Laura <laughs> the beautiful thing so it's, it's just this terrible thing that I I just thought was awful. And they actually have children. I, there's pictures of women and children like 14 years old doing this. And it's just tearing me up inside, guys. Oh, my. They're like, Look at this they're picture. Like, they like legitimately have like shocking gloves and they're wearing like shirts. Shirts. Yeah, like for, they're like, yeah. it's a, can we get a, an S, what is that, an F, S, SFT F-T shirt? It's shock, shock fight team. fighting team. Can we get a, a shock fight team shirt? And, and they have like legitimate like made gloves. It's not like makeshift. Who Looking came up things, with this idea? They're like proud I, about it. They're like, look at us. Like, mm, woo! I know. We're going to hit people and shock them. And, and well, the good news is, <laughs> is that there's only like five clubs and they're all in Brazil. Like, no, I'll leave it to the Brazilians. <laughs> no, so uh, look, at the, like, look at the tagline. No judges, I know. no rules, just pain. <laughs> Who signs up for something like that? Not me. Well, ask UFC players, I mean. Yeah. Well, but there's at least judges and rules. The founder of it, his name is... And they're not getting shocked with three million volts of electricity. Ronda Rousey with three million shocked Oh. She could take it. She could take it. Oh, no. She would just... She'd be giving it. She'd melt people. She would. (laughs) She would. She would be melting people with how much electricity. Wow. Yeah, the the founder of it, Michael Alexander, just said, we just felt it was a natural progression. Like, this was bound to happen. Yeah, that's Natural progression. He's like, we want you, whether you're a black, white, Hispanic, whatever you are. He's like, if you got the nerve, we're going to say that, to come and do this then. Well done. Good choice of words. <laughs> I'm then waiting, I'm do waiting, it. I'm waiting for Mortal Kombat to be real. Oh, no. 
Mortal Kombat. Uh, finish him. Finish like, him. I'm waiting for that to be like real next. Be like, I'm gonna shoot chains out of there and yeah. like, freeze people and set them yeah. on fire. Like that's just that would be that. Really in cool. my opinion, would be the logical next. Give step. them an that's extra shocking, like them. Sh- shatter their skull and then they stand up and are fighting like, oh, for evil. Like, oh, cool. I'm yeah. absolutely okay, everybody. My yeah. spine just got destroyed, but yeah. I'm okay. Wow, shock fighting. Isn't well, that, honestly, like at brutal. first, I wasn't like thinking that was like super depressing until he got into it more. I thought you were going to talk about, like, puppy chucking or something oh, like no, that. No, no, no. That's Friday. That's <laughs> even worse. Why would kitten you talk about that? How, how far can you throw a kitten? Okay, or something like... La, 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 la. <laughs> Instead of a t-shirt gun, they have the kitten gun. <laughs> Stop! It's Stop! A pop, it's a popular sport in England. Stop! <laughs> Leave it to the Brits. <sighs> You guys don't know when to stop. I <laughs> just keep saying it, and you won't stop. Okay, I'm done. Anyway, Laura, thank you so much for stopping. Yeah, it's always it a pleasure. Too. Always a pleasure. But I'm here actually for the next segment. Yeah, too, you're here so for what if? Don't so, try I mean, to get rid of me too quick. I wasn't trying to get rid of you. I'm I'm excited that you're here. Um, but anyway, uh, Grant, do you have any more things to talk about for uh, for shock fighting, or can I move on? I I think you can. Good. I'm gonna move on. <laughs> anyway, so it's Wednesday, which means it's what if Wednesday. All right, Grant, you will start us off today, sir, with your what if scenario for Laura and I. Uh, my what if scenario is what if the NL switches from pitchers batting to um, having a DH or designated hitter? Laura? Uh, you, know you go that, first. You know what that means? <laughs> yeah, oh, and what, wait, let's do that once again. <laughs> what Because the National League, they don't have designated hitters. Yeah. They're pitchers bat. Yeah, but in yeah. A- AL, the American League, they have people yeah, hit yeah. for the pitchers. So what if the NL switched to that? Oh, well... I'll power to them. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking about my what if while you were talking about yours tonight. It's a great idea, in all honesty. Laura, just, anyway. Yes, it needs to happen. Pitchers, I think, bring down the fact of the game. We see people like Adam Wainwright get hurt because they're not trained to hit. They're trained to throw the exactly. ball. Exactly. No, that's actually what I was thinking. It is. <laughs> it is. All right. Okay. okay, Laura. Good question. Good question. Your what Thanks. if, Laura? Um, what if <laughs> we incorporated electricity into other common known sports? How fun would that be? I think people would lose <gasps> their heads in hockey. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, in one of the stadiums that they're building over in was San Francisco. In sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're it's actually it's the they're actually LA, having LA, LA, real LA. lightning. Yeah. And I was like, that's so cool. It's a so huge cool. fire so, hazard, but it's so cool. There we yeah, go. they're building in their new stadium, the Chargers, because they're moving to L.A. They're, if you don't know... Every time they score they're supposedly score a touchdown, they're gonna show up, shoot, shoot off them. lightning, and the art of for this for the stadium, it's it's huge. It's, it's so like bigger cool. than it's like taller. I'm than waiting the for like a plane stadium. to get shot down oh by the lightning, and be like, gosh. "Oh, sorry." You're like, well, <laughs> but and then my joke to that because it was posted to Facebook, and I yeah. commented, "I'm like, so uh, the Chargers are only gonna score." Once a year because lightning never strikes twice in the same oh, place. Uh, <laughs> that was a good one. I got Terrible. jokes. You don't funny. worry, I got you jokes. Funny. All right, and my what if for both of you is uh, what if um, we had a fight between Connor and Grant with the uh, lightning gloves? <laughs> Who would win? I think if you took out the lightning gloves, I would still lose. Probably. So, Shot gloves, we'll set it up. He knows fighting. I just like. Slap right, slap left. <laughs> yeah, X, X, R, B, I don't know. Analog stick. Analog <laughs> stick. Uppercut, yeah, exactly. And Connor's just like, just roar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would agree. Connor, Connor versus Ronda Rousey, I'd pay to see that. And Connor, Connor would get destroyed. He would get destroyed. Because Ronda's... Oh, he's so sad. I'd be like, buddy, you can do it. You got it. <laughs> don't corner. look into the light. Don't tap out. <laughs> <laughs> the light of Ronda's shot glove coming at his face. <laughs> All right. Anyway, well, this has been another edition of the Max and Grand Sports Show presented by Sports Radio America. Intern Laura, North. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you always do. We look forward to you coming back again on Friday. Thank you for wearing your I'll official Max and Grand Sports Show. Yeah, Grand I thought this show. was going to be like a thing. I thought we were all were going to do this. Well, we, we can do it Friday. We can do it yeah. Monday. We'll, do, we'll, we'll, we'll wear them Friday. We'll wear the same shirt on Friday. Days. Well, that's uh, why I didn't wear it on Wednesday. Yeah. Because we wore it on Monday. Mm-hmm. Maybe you'd why do you look. expect it from us but not of yourself? I'm a girl. I'm a girl. <laughs> Can't repeat wow. outfits the same week, Grant. Sexism. Mm. It's Sexism true. Right here. Okay. Oh goodness, anyway. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for tuning in today. For those of you watching us on The Cube, thank you so much for watching. For those of you listening to us here on Spreaker and Sports Radio America, Lord, thank Lord you just shocked well. me. <laughs> 
Grant and Laura are going to go fight now. I'm going to go get more coffee because Lord knows I need it. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. For uh, Intern Laura, you can find her on Twitter where? At Intern Laura BGSS. Yes, ma'am. She does all the social media for us as well during the social. Thank you to her as well. Uh, Grant Coppersmith, final thoughts? Nope. All today. right. All righty, Grant. Uh, thank you so much to everybody that listened. Uh, this has been another edition of our show. Uh, Grant, what day is it? Hump day! Hump day! We will see you all again on Friday. Take care, be safe, be good, and stay out of trouble. And if you're going to go right in Baltimore, please don't because Ray Lewis will crush you. Have a good rest of your day, folks, and stay out of trouble. See ya!